In a lot of ways, biochemistry is the study of how energy moves through life. We spend so much time learning up on metabolism and how living things process and transfer energy at the chemical level. Just you wait until I start doing videos on metabolic pathways, you will not thank me later. But that energy has to come from somewhere. You can't escape thermodynamics. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only change forms and move throughout the universe. And for us, 100% of that energy comes from the sun. And that's pretty much it for all life on Earth besides a few weirdo bacteria. And Archaea, but whatever. We can't capture sunlight on our own. We don't have solar panels or anything. We rely on plants to capture that sunlight for us. We get access to that energy by eating plants, or the animals that eat the plants, or whatever. The process by which plants turn sunlight into food is photosynthesis, and it is miraculous. We're taking a deep dive across probably half a dozen videos where we uncover the mechanics of how plants turn water and carbon dioxide into oxygen and sugar using nothing but sunshine. Today, I'm going to zero in on the structure that starts this process. Meet Photosystem 2, a gorgeous machine made out of proteins, light-sensitive pigments, and a few carefully placed metal ions. In a lot of ways, this is the engine that powers all life on Earth, and the single chemical that made our life on Earth possible. And over the next few minutes, I'm going to take you under the hood and show you how it works. Alright, let's pull back a second and get a real sense of scale here. Photosynthesis is a huge, sprawling topic in biochemistry. At a high level, it's divided into two parts, the light reactions and the light independent reactions. What we are going to go through today is the first step of those light reactions. We're not even touching steps two through four, let alone the entire second half of photosynthesis. That'll have to come out gradually in future videos, but I've linked a playlist up top here where you can watch all of those videos in order as they come out. Which brings us to today's machine, Photosystem 2. I know it's weird that photosynthesis starts with the second photosystem, but it's only called that because it was discovered after Photosystem 1. Science, like every other human enterprise, can get kind of messy, and sometimes you just gotta roll with it. Photosystem 2, which we're gonna call PS2, that's Roman numeral 2 from here on out, lives in the thylakoid membrane with the rest of the machines that power the light reactions of photosynthesis. To pull back for a quick review, this is a plant cell. It's like your cells, but with a few different structures. The main one we're going to focus on is the chloroplast here, which is where photosynthesis happens in its entirety. Inside the double membrane of the chloroplast are a bunch of other membrane-bound structures called thylakoids, which are usually found in little stacks like this called granum, or grana for plural. Thanks, Latin. The inside of the thylakoid is called the lumen, and the space outside is called the stroma. I know we're doing a lot of labeling here, but the stroma and lumen are the real important parts of photosynthesis. So, if you forget every other stage of this Russian nesting doll, just remember that you've got the stroma on the outside and the lumen on the inside. Uh, in... slide and uh, out stride, I guess? Uh, I don't know. Please comment below with a better mnemonic device if you've got one, y'all. But between the stroma and lumen, you've got the thylakoid membrane, which is your standard phospholipid bilayer. This barrier creates the concentration gradients needed to power the latter parts of photosynthesis. And straddling that membrane is the focus of today's video, PS2. I'm not going to be able to give you a comprehensive view of the whole structure of PS2, because it is immense, but we can break it into a few broad sections. You've got the structural proteins which hold everything in place, the antenna receptors, the reaction center, and then this little bunch of manganese, oxygen, and calcium called the Oxygen Evolving Complex, or OEC for short. All of these little bits add up to perform the following process. Photosystem 2 was responsible for taking in photons from sunlight and using their energy to crack open two water molecules, producing one oxygen molecule, that's O2, four electrons, and four protons. That oxygen is useless to this process and will get kicked out of the system entirely and only go on to make the atmosphere breathable for all non-plant life on the planet. The four electrons are going to travel up PS2 and help power the next few steps of photosynthesis, while those four protons are going to hang out in the lumen, building their concentration to the point that they help power the last step of these light reactions. And let's meet our cast of characters in detail. The star of the show here is none other than chlorophyll, the green pigment you've probably already heard so much about. Chlorophyll is the primary molecule that reacts to sunlight in Photosystem 2, but there are a few other pigments that help out as well. 
Let's dive into the structure of chlorophyll real quick so we can start to understand how it powers photosynthesis. The most important structure is this polyphoron ring. Now the reason chlorophyll can even get energy from sunlight is because that ring has a bunch of alternating single and double bonds, which help electrons move freely around the ring, which is especially useful if one of them happens to absorb light and get excited. Because of this shape, chlorophyll is excellent for absorbing red and blue light, but terrible at absorbing green light. That's why leaves are green, because all the chlorophyll is absorbing red and blue light and reflecting green back at you. Absorption is an all-or-nothing proposition. Either a photon has the exact right wavelength and gets absorbed, or it's a little bit off and it gets reflected. Now in this case, absorption means that one electron in the chlorophyll ring will get excited. A photon will hit it in exactly the right way and kick it into a higher energy state. The thing is, electrons don't like having too much energy, and once they get like this, they'll do pretty much anything to get rid of it. Usually when this happens, that electron will jump back down to a lower state by releasing heat or light. But if there is something nearby that can serve as an electron acceptor, it'll jump there instead. This is actually why there are so many chlorophylls up here. They're acting as antennas that will channel photons down to the two main chlorophyll molecules in the reaction center. That way PS2 isn't relying on the insane bullseye of the exact right photon hitting the exact right place. In addition to the chlorophylls in these antenna structures, there's also other pigments like beta-carotene, which absorb light at a different wavelength and therefore broaden PS2's ability to capture sunlight. But that brings us down to the reaction center and the two most important chlorophyll molecules. These two are coupled together. This special pair is called P680 because these max out their absorption ability for light that has a wavelength of 680 nanometers, otherwise known as red light. P680 packs a punch. When it loses an electron after getting energized, it becomes the single strongest oxidizing agent known in any biological system. Not to get too deep into regular chemistry, but this just means that this little nub has the strongest pull to rip electrons off surrounding molecules known in nature. Which is good, because that's literally P680's job. It takes in all that excited energy from photons hitting either it or its antenna complexes and uses it to rip electrons off water. Utilizing this, the oxygen evolving complex. Welcome to where the magic happens, the OEC. This little bunch of calcium, manganese, and oxygen helps P680 by attracting and associating with water molecules so that the light energy can zap it apart. The mechanism here is only really beginning to be understood, but there's a lot of kick-ass research on the subject where scientists have made some pretty good guesses. As always, I cite my sources and take criticism from people way smarter than me over on my Twitter, at this underscore clockwork. Link in the bio, y'all. Please check out those sources, that's where the real cool stuff is. Given how fuzzy the understanding here is, I'm gonna have to simplify this for the sake of time. But essentially, the OEC helps the breakdown of water by 1. Holding water molecules in the exact right place, and 2. Temporarily giving up a few electrons to some of these water molecules as protons and electrons get blasted off of them. I think the major thing you need to know here is that the OEC is what holds on to the water while P680 does the real work. P680 is the hammer and the OEC is the anvil. Um. If a hammer was more like a vacuum cleaner, kinda. Metaphors, y'all. And so now we have the cast of characters set. We've got P680, getting energized by sunlight and its antenna complexes. We've got the Oxygen Evolution Center set up just right for water to get blasted apart by that energy. So let's start the show. Welcome to the Coke Cycle. This starts with two water molecules entering the system and associating with the OEC. This is the S0 state, the calm before things get wild. And then, a photon of just the right wavelength hits P680 or one of its antenna complexes. If the light hits an antenna chlorophyll, the energy cascades down to P680. That energy excites an electron in P680 and flings it up to the top right of the reaction center over here. Now this process is incredibly fast, but I'm going to slow things way down here to give you a better view of how this works. Without one of its electrons, P680 becomes P680+, an incredible force of violence against neighboring molecules. P680+, is the single strongest oxidizing agent known in the natural world. If you're like me and only barely remember chemistry class, that basically means that P680 has an irresistibly strong vacuum pull for nearby electrons. This pole can tear nearby molecules apart in order to harvest them for their electrons. Which is why it's pretty convenient that the OEC here is holding on to these two perfectly nice water molecules. 
An electron pops off one of the water molecules, which sends one of these hydrogen protons flying as a result. Remember, a hydrogen atom is one proton and one electron. So when one of these electrons gets straight up stolen by P680, you're left with a naked proton hanging out in solution. The electron is picked up by this handy tyrosine here and channeled back into P680, returning it to a normal state. With one of those water molecules broken, things are a little bit less stable but still doable in the system. But then, another photon hits, and the cycle repeats. P680 pumps an excited electron up into the top right of the reaction center, which we'll get to in a second. P680 becomes P680+, plus and goes all Super Saiyan on another water molecule, sucking up one electron and sending a proton down into the lumen. Things are a little less stable, but still doable. And it happens again! Welcome to S3. We're now really busting up these water molecules, but luckily the OEC is shuffling electrons around in a way that's keeping it all together for the moment. And it happens a fourth time. More energy, another electron, and a final proton getting removed from the system. This is S4. With two naked oxygen atoms in here, this is the least stable the system gets. But since they are naked atoms, these oxygens finally have a path to stability. They combine and turn into regular old O2 and leave the system. After a millisecond and a half of rest, we are back to the beginning, the lowest energy state, S0. This is the major mechanism of PS2, and this is the engine that powers all life on Earth, and it is beautiful. And to go back for a second, the energized electrons that get kicked out of P680 end here, at a molecule called plastoquinone. Specifically, this is plastoquinone QB. Once two of the energized electrons end up on this guy, it sucks up two protons from the stroma and then snaps off, going on to quarterback the start of the next step of photosynthesis. This actually happens twice during the coke cycle, I just didn't call it out the first time. Did you catch that earlier? If not, go back and review. That's half the fun of studying science anyway. Meanwhile, those protons are pulled further down into the lumen. The fact that protons are leaving the stroma and getting produced in the lumen is going to create a pretty cool charge separation. Cells can do a lot with protons caught on the wrong side of a concentration gradient like this, and they're going to power the last part of the light reactions. But we're gonna have to get to that another time. And there it is. That's Photosystem 2's role in the simplest possible terms, he said, 20 minutes later. It takes four charges of photon energy to turn four water molecules into a single oxygen atom, four protons, and four energized electrons. The protons and electrons will go on to power the rest of Photosynthesis's light reactions, while the oxygen will be quickly pumped out of the chloroplast and out of the plant entirely. This process is powered by chlorophyll's ability to absorb light, exciting one of its electrons, and that energy's ability to tear water apart. And it all happens in this beautiful machine, Photosystem 2. I know it took a lot to go through this story in detail, but that studying was so worth it to me, because clarifying these mechanics gave me a much richer understanding of just how important Photosystem 2 is. Because if you're this far along in studying biology, you're probably also studying physics and geology, and getting a better sense of the history of the Earth and the life that has evolved out of it. You might know that before Photosystem 2, the world was a nearly inhospitable hellscape. The scariest part about studying the universe is discovering how 99% of the cosmos wants to destroy you. Before Photosystem 2, the sun was a raging cancer gun that kept life on Earth confined to the oceans. But then a machine similar to Photosystem 2 evolved in a small bacteria two and a half billion years ago. And for the first time, life on Earth reached back out into this cold, cruel universe and straight up took back some of the solar energy for its own use. In doing so, those bacteria flourished and started producing oxygen in mass. O2 concentration in Earth's atmosphere went from 0 to 21% today. Life that breathes that O2 thrived and evolved into way more complex forms, but it only had the opportunity to do so because all that oxygen also ended up in the upper atmosphere, becoming the ozone layer that helps shield us from that solar radiation. Photosystem 2 found a way to reach out into the cold, unfeeling universe and turned the sun from an engine of destruction to the life-giving provider we know it as today. It is so insane that a single machine flipped the script the way PS2 has. This is the engine that made life as we know it on Earth possible, and it will never stop amazing me. Especially considering that I pass by trillions of these machines every single day. And I hope this deep dive helped you gain a richer understanding of this beautiful world we find ourselves in. 
I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. And once again, thank you so much for getting all the way to the end here. As always, I'm going to be citing my sources over at my Twitter, at this underscore clockwork. I'm going to have a bunch of them here, and I'm going to be taking criticism for science Twitter in case I got anything wrong here or oversimplified or anything. As always, read the sources once you go through videos like this, because you will get a much better understanding and deepen that connection you have to the science so much more if you go and take the time to read the papers. At the same time, I'm going to try to condense any of that knowledge into a blog post over at my site, clockwork show, so please be sure to check that out. These videos take a lot of work to put out. I'm currently putting them out monthly, but I'm working really hard to get it down to a once every two week style schedule. You can be a part of helping that out by checking out my Patreon, which is linked down below. At the same time, feel free to make a one-time donation over on my PayPal page. Either way, I appreciate your time so much. Thank you so much for hanging out here. And as always, I like to leave you with peace, love, and ligands. Everyone be well. Thank you so much.